right, yeah, so uh, just kind of relax and try like piss you more. You think it could piss? Is this? Yeah, I think this How's more the, natural. Is this, <laughs> it's a lot less stressful. Right around, right around there. It's the show that's never about magnets. We talk about stuff, but never about magnets. It's a pretty good show, and also fuck magnets. All right, everyone, we're here with Isaac Kotek, a.k.a. Sabequius, an uh, old friend of mine, uh, amazing producer, entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. um, what, what else What else is there that's interesting Arch about villain. you? Arch villain. Arch villain. Yeah. Rival. I don't know who's the villain, the rival, or the I'm hero the here. Oh. Yeah. Well, the villain's always cool. Yeah, that's why I'm the villain. <laughs> right. So, uh, artist. Mm -hmm. uh, you do a lot of art. Um some yeah. behind us if there's it's in the frame oh wow not that one but not that one ones. yeah oh, those are good mm -hmm. excellent so uh yeah man it's uh it's cool you're the first interview i've ever done where i actually traveled out of state <laughs> so congratulations mm -hmm. um should we say what where you live or do you want to keep that I yeah guess. so my address is you know, I mean, you know, we don't have to <laughs> my that. door code <laughs> your door code uh this is portland oregon Okay, cool. Yeah, I lived yeah. in Seattle for 10-something years where Long we met. Yeah. Uh, and then I've been down here for five years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're, uh, you're, you're still kind of a, a mainstay in the uh, Seattle underground scene. Yeah. Um, I think you're, you're bigger in the burner scene. I mean, it all gets wishy-washy of what yeah, scene yeah. is what. Kind of. But the... yeah, kind of like the burner conscious electronic music, bass music scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're you're well known as a as a teacher, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know one of the cool things about this interview is uh, you started your journey in production um, almost the same time as me. You you were a little bit earlier. It had a few years. It, yeah. yeah. I, oh yeah, it was it was like a couple years. Yeah. I, I remember at tour camp. That's the first time. Uh huh. I, I, which is, was a crazy, <laughs> <laughs> that's when I realized we... we were artists. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and not what everyone else was there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was a hacker conference and, uh, everyone there was like super nerding out on all the different like tech things and blah, blah, blah. And we created, uh, me and my friend Yael, we created this sound installation that people could come and interact with sound and it would change consciousness using binaural beats and different things. Mm -hmm. And people would come up and they'd just be like, what? Yeah, what is this? <laughs> yeah, and they yeah, just wanted yeah. to understand the tech and it's like, don't understand the tech, like just right. take it as an artistic package, mm -hmm. you know? It's really yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah it, was a really, it was a really wild event. There was, a, there was like a, a very powerful dust devil. That, that like, took someone away. It sucked. It sucked. <laughs> so yeah, I remember we had um, these these suits we had made for like a glow play. It was like all black suits people wore, and it had EL wire around it. Mm -hmm. And one of those got sucked up into the vortex, and uh, and from uh, the ground it looked like someone had actually been sucked into this <laughs> <Yeah>. tornado. <laughs> really weird time. It was like 120 degrees in the desert. At a middle nuclear, of nowhere. Yeah, it was a nuclear uh, bomb shelter. No, it was not a, Titan, a shelter. Titan missile silo. Titan missile silo. That yeah. was cool. And we weren't allowed into it. We weren't allowed into it. Yeah. <laughs> Until we were. <laughs> Until we were. <laughs> it was a big problem. Uh, yeah, that was... Yeah, so that's where I played some of my music first. And I remember... Um, uh, let's see. The first bit of feedback I ever got. Mm. You said, I think it needs some compression. <laughs> and looking back, I... Uh, yeah, that's that's where the the trouble started because I, I, I just was like, oh, <laughs> dun, compression! Dun, dun. I just threw compression on everything. Oh yeah, you know, it was like sausage fattener style. A perfect sausage. Everything and I was is... young then too. I didn't quite understand it all either, right? Like, right. I think that's a common um, cycle, which is like, ooh, I can do all these sounds, and then oh, now there's all these things I don't understand, so I'm gonna nerd out. And then you overdo everything. You overdo right. EQ. I overdo reverb yeah. for too long. Yeah. Like it just sounded like washy crap. And eventually you come back the other side where you're like, less is more, like mm -hmm. minimalism. Yeah, it's it's funny because uh, when I first started, I didn't even know like what EQ was for. I was like, oh, mm -hmm. it's the it's for 
EQing things, you know, but I didn't have any context of like where yeah, to put yeah, it. Yeah. And then my EQs were like ah! pushing this down, e- yeah, yeah. ramping that up. Yeah. And then, oh, now I'm going to put it through a compressor and another EQ and yeah. then compress that one. And then you have some phase <laughs> issues. Yep, yep. And then, <laughs> my... and then you're like, why does everything sound all wiggly? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All like washed out and like muffled. Oh. Yeah. So now my EQs are just kind of like very, very yeah. subtle. A little dip. Just a little here, a little, little there. Raise. Yeah. It's a, it's a cool, um, it's a cool uh, kind of like perspective to mm. like come to a place where now you're, you're actually good at a thing and then you can look at your old work uh-huh. and, and say like, oh man, you know, I was, I was way off in the woods. Like I didn't know what I was doing there, but it's cool, right? That's the process. Um, and I think uh, you're, you're kind of like my rival for a long time. See. Still are, yeah, it's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah well you know because uh for a long time you would produce something uh-huh. and then i would be like oh god isaac he leveled up yeah i, I need level to get up. there yeah, yeah 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 and we would just bounce stuff back and forth um but i think you know for me for a long time i just kept all of my stuff to myself i didn't release anything uh-huh. and you went deep you know you went you dove right into it and you were you were traveling uh you played big shows yeah well trying to kind of that last point it's a long time ago i learned to just be a fool in public uh-huh. right, <laughs> like, right 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 like be as quickly as possible out in the world looking like an idiot because mm-hmm. one if you look like an idiot too much to the point where just people won't take you serious it's good right, you can right. get away with a lot yeah right like you can be more experimental with your music it's not this big pressure <clears throat> and two you're just gonna get beyond that hump mm-hmm. right so many people hold it for a really long time well i did I, what got me through was street dance mm-hmm. when I finally started dancing and, and uh, a lot of anxiety, you know, like going out every day and like performing for people, Yeah, you know, and that's, that was a great tool of just kind of like, it's like waves washing a stone smooth, you know, it's totally, like you just, at some point you realize that it's not that big of a deal. It's just about consistency and putting it out. Mm-hmm. And eventually it'll get good. Yeah. yeah. So um, let me think. So uh, you released your your first album, uh, which was <laughs> which we totally <laughs> forgot its name. We I don't know why. Up before I the was interview. gonna look it up, but I didn't. <laughs> yeah. I never play it. Uh, yeah. Maybe waveform or something. Waveform like that. or wave shape. Or, it's yeah. so long ago. It's like yeah. ten plus years at this point. But I remember. It's like I try to forget about it. I was at your release party uh, oh. when you were at that group house in. Uh, uh, is it Shoreline or something? It was on the water. Oh yeah, yeah. So that was yeah, um, yeah Lakeside Collective. The Lakeside Collective. Yeah. yeah, which was you know pretty cool. And uh, yeah, we I remember listening to that. But then you drastically departed from that I think yeah, you made like all your mistakes like I think it was good artistically but you made all your mistakes up front and then you like yeah I think with that album it was just a little heady yeah and then and also in some ways too clean like everything was a lot of sine waves and like very mm. precise in a way that led to it feeling uninteresting mm-hmm. and then I overreacted in the next two EPs and they were like trying to be good you know what i mean i was like trying to do what i thought others would like yeah and then it was only until that album emerge which funny enough is when i feel like i emerged like that was like Mm -hmm. when i felt i made an album right because it it had a story and a feel like the whole thing had a theme Mm -hmm. to it where everything before was just me trying to figure it out yeah yeah it's just like you're you're isolated uh, yeah, like little experiments, experiments on, just, and... on the floor. And I'm like, yep, that's good. <laughs> Bring this. Yeah, yeah. These are my ideas. That's you know, good. like, um, I, I I haven't released my, my next EP, but the one that is out. Just you wait and see. It's going to be amazing. Check it out. Follow the link below. Oh, oh thank you for doing that. <laughs> yeah. I always do that in the things. I feel so awkward. Like, hey, subscribe and hit the like button and do all this. Smash. No, don't smash. Gently press Gently it. press it. Oh, that's just my you're, thing. As you're touching his caress, face, caress, caress the like button <laughs> and uh, activate. 
the, the still notification press bell. Yeah, but <laughs> press that. Yeah. <laughs> so I. Uh, Let's get into marketing. Was, what was I just talking about, man? <laughs> you completely well, album or merge story? Your new album? Yes, my old one. Yeah. Um, it's the one that's out right now on the website. Everything, but uh, with that one, I feel very similar. Like this, this feeling of like this is the best thing I've ever made, and like maybe I'll never make anything good again. You yeah. know, like the, the fear of that. Uh -huh. And then you start making more stuff, and you realize, oh, I can still progress. Like, just because I made a good thing or had a good idea, that doesn't mean that's the idea or that's the good thing. Totally. Um, and I would say that's probably one of the biggest problems with artists I know. Because I've, you know, been producing and performing out in the world for a long time. I know a lot of musicians. And something I keep seeing is a musician that takes off really quick. Mm. And then they get afraid that they won't ever be as good as that last album. Right. And then they'll just keep waiting. And then the pressure builds and the pressure builds. And then they just kind of disappear. Either they, in fear, make a really crappy ar album because they just, they're kind of trying to prove the fact that they think they suck. Mm -hmm. Or they just stop producing. So the right. key is just that consistency and speed. Just keep making it. Yeah. Keep, always have the next idea starting to move while you're putting out the last one. So that you never get caught right. with that in-between moment of like, ah, what's it all about? <laughs> you know, I yeah, I, sometimes I this thing happens where um, there's a period, maybe a month, maybe two, maybe three months, where I feel like, oh, I, I'm not producing anything. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not creating anything. And then I open up, uh, like, my folder because I save all the little, like, you know, yeah. loops and things, I, all the ideas. And I look and I go, actually, I've been like producing every day just throwing out these ideas that mm. aren't sticking to the wall you know and i think um it's kind of like watering the garden mm -hmm, versus mm -hmm. like eating the fruit these are my cactuses i put googly eyes on them sometimes it just takes a while before you you get a really good idea and you and then you decide to move forward on that and yeah and i think this is something that's maybe a little different from people who play instruments Mm -hmm. Like um, uh, Scott Drum Spider, mm -hmm. like I went to a few shows with him, and I remember he would always we were at festivals. He would go off and he would practice. He would practice right. drumming. He's been doing this for like <clears throat> long time, fifteen, yeah, yeah, twenty yeah. years, whatever. And I just be like, why is he still practicing? And mm -hmm. it's because you have to to keep your skill and to progress as a instrument player. Right. And I think sometimes electronic musicians don't come at it in the same way mm -hmm. they don't come at it as in like this is the practice like you're uh, saying. right 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 like it's that, an instrument it's not just like a, a skill exactly and it's something yeah. that you just keep practicing to improve just for the sake of it and then you'll be able to produce a song or whatever i remember you you had a uh you told me a story uh of a partner of yours that was that you were making music and she was you know very much an art you know artistic kind of musical you know creative person she's like wow you know when i do creative things this is like this emotional like experience but this is like very precise mm -hmm. it's like you know it, and i feel like when you do things with computers art with computers that, that can be it's a shame sometimes that that's lacking is this like you, you know totally. the the uh being in your body instead of being in your head yeah, and it leads mm. to cerebral kind of nerdy music type music. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I think the key to that, and I <laughs> learned it over time. Definitely at that point, I was in that stage. Mm -hmm. And over time, I began to realize like, oh no, if I can feel a vibe in myself and follow that through my music, I'm going to get something that's way more interesting and mm -hmm. more um, pulls on people. Right. Um, but... You can only really do that in bursts. It's like, yeah, yeah. I'm going to come up with ideas in this feeling, and then I'm going to get on my nerd hat, and I'm just going to tweak it a long time. Yeah. And you have, to, you have to learn to be kind of emotionally, um, it's like method acting. Mm -hmm. Like, how can I jump into these different modes of thinking? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think uh, the old paradigm was uh, you would play an instrument, you'd make a band, then you'd get popular, then you'd get like an engineer, Mm -hmm. uh, 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 
so you an arranger, an engineer, producer, producer, uh, mastering engineer, uh, marketing agent. Uh-huh. It, you, you know, like all this stuff. Uh, you'd have some photographer. It depends how big you would get, but you'd have all of these things. And I think the modern tour musician, manager, tour manager. Yeah. So now, now <laughs> if you want to be a musician, unless you're Billie Eilish, you have to do it all. Uh-huh. Right. Unless you really get big enough. Um, and that there's an opportunity there, right? Which is now we have the, the opportunity for people to m- be a middle-class musician but I think um, the the dark side of that is like you lose you you can't be as specialized. You have to spend more time, you know, branching out to all of these things, learning how to be a percussionist and a bass player and a, a yeah. sound designer and uh, blah, 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 blah. yeah. Which means very few people can have all those skills mm-hmm. to make it. Yeah. Right. Because or you could just start a band. We should start a band. Of course we should start a band. That, that is still an option. You can still start a band. Like, you, no! no! <laughs> but then you have to deal with people. And that's... Uh, and oh, schedules? Schedules. And that's the worst. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> practice with people and uh, they show up hungover. One, yeah, I was gonna say, one <laughs> yeah. is drunk. One yeah. is drunk. Yeah. One won't stop the noodling. Bassist. And talk. <laughs> yeah, the bassist. <laughs> is it the bassist that's usually drunk? High. They're usually high. They're usually high. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're losing all of the... Yeah, they're like, unlike, unlike. Unlike, unlike. Yeah, fuck this guy. I'm a bass player. <laughs> hey, I didn't say it was bad. <laughs> I'm a bass player. Oh. Yeah, I'm real bad. <laughs> but I'm good enough for what I need to do. That's. I think that's another thing is sometimes you can be good enough. You know, if you have one skill that's really good, like you don't need to be like the best engineer and the best guitarist and... Like the more things you have, the better. But, but you don't necessarily need to be, like, Tim Henson on yeah. guitar. And you know, you can just you can still have a bit of a specialization and touch in the other things. Just be good enough at those things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just also a big question of what you want your music for. Mm-hmm. Like, I know some musicians who have terrible understanding of music theory. Mm-hmm. They don't even understand it. They're just like playing some notes it sounds good but when you listen to their music it's very rhythmic Mm -hmm. like the bass is there and the melodies to propel the rhythm it's very dance floor oriented music Mm -hmm. so that's totally fine because it propels the use of the music but if they were to write like a down tempo album it's gonna suck yeah uh so i think it's like finding where your specialty is and recognize how that makes your music unique Mm -hmm. and useful for certain situations yeah and being okay with sucking at something until you're better you know like if yeah. you like if you're if you're really good at making like four to the floor dance like electro music or something right and then you're like okay now i want to do a down tempo album just be fine with kind of mm. sucking in that spot oh you suck and then months years I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> decades <laughs> some yeah. people their whole lives i don't know <laughs> yeah but eventually yeah. eventually you do yeah yeah. You you will if you keep working at something and um the critical element I think is speaking with your own voice, like having your own kind of like um your own story to tell. Uh-huh. If you have that, you will eventually get through whatever it is and, and like produce something worthwhile in that technique. I actually I wanna talk to you about this. Um so for me I know when I was trying to make music for other people, I couldn't make anything useful or good, mm-hmm. right? And it was only when I had something I wanted to tell people that I feel like my music got like pretty good. Hmm. Um, and did do you agree with that? Like, do you think that's a? Uh, I kind of. I believe you can do both. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is, when I've made music for people, I've made like more commercial music. Mm-hmm. I've made some music for um, organizations right. uh, that usually needed either meditation music or background music for a film or whatever. So the thing is, when I went into that project, not recognizing that I wasn't expressing myself, right. I was expressing what they needed, it released so much pressure 
around my artistic integrity oh, right yeah, and like yeah. all this like holding on to like it needs to be just right i was like Psh, just needs to be effective like how can i get there as quick as possible mm -hmm. and you make good music it's it's not music that feeds my soul right right it's not the music that is uniquely me but it allowed me the freedom to express things that i wouldn't otherwise which mm -hmm. is really interesting and can be really helpful to to speed up your ability to just write and yeah. then when i went on to my own music it was like a lot easier to get in but you know this is a little esoteric i think i think y'all can handle yeah, I, I think we, but if anyone's watching me they're <laughs> they're way out there already man don't worry about it uh yeah. At least in my own music, I felt like there was an emotion that I wanted to express or I wanted to feel that I didn't see anywhere else. Mm -hmm. It was somewhere in between like morose and sadness and like spiritual awe, like somewhere in between right. there. And it, and it has a, a very distinct texture to it. Mm -hmm. So when I didn't see that, I made it and it took me a long time to find the right sound and the right way of propelling that mood mm -hmm. and then that became became the music right and that became yeah. the voice and i think each one of us has at least one if not multiple of these unique experiences around like a feeling like a feeling mm -hmm. that words don't even it's like in between words we don't have the language for yeah and when you can find that and express it that's what draws people in because they're like finally i feel this thing and i have something that that reminds me of it externally it's not just an internal world yeah 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 that's that's a good point i um yeah for a long time i i don't know if you remember i was trying to make the 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 forest i had this forest uh -huh. in my head and that forest was actually like a feeling was this the one with the robot yeah yeah there was a whole story there's a whole story it, I, remember. I, I was gonna make like uh like like a weird electronic rave opera thing and, uh -huh. and i just i just got lost in that but what i actually was trying to do was find like a feeling mm -hmm. like i had i had this idea in my head and i couldn't get it out um and i think i finally did but just not in the way that i thought i would huh. um I, I was gonna say when when you were mentioning uh you know kind of saying okay i'm gonna i'm making this for someone else and and kind of putting yourself into a box creatively, um, there's a paradox there. Mm -hmm. Because I've definitely noticed that um, for a long time, my desire to be unique put me into a box. Like I could never touch the things that were touched before, mm. or I could never, uh, like there was a long time I would never use a guitar, right? Because guitar had been in like every song for like 50 years. Yeah. Right. And I think part of that, too, is um, when I was growing up uh, in the uh, it started kind of late 90s and then in the, the aughts, uh, that was like a really dark time for guitar and kind of like rock and roll. Mm -hmm. It was when that type of music lost its soul. Um, and I was just really sick of that. But this translated into kind of a rejection of, of like anything that had been done before. Um, and I think one of the things that's changed is this like sudden celebration of of music in all its forms, right? So like guitar or um, you know weird uh, you know instruments from around the world and these things and <laughs> and, uh, and uh, things that are kind of like played out or um, uh, stereotypical. Mm -hmm. There's a way of enjoying those as, as almost like a piece of music history. Mm -hmm. And like once I could do that, then then I felt like I could create my own sound. But sometimes having a box to be in um, is actually gets you out of the box. And sometimes trying to be out of the box puts you into boxes you never saw coming. Yeah. yeah. All right. There you go. <laughs> so, <laughs> now you know. Now you know what to do. Now you know what to do. Go out there and make music, people. In boxes. Yeah. Different boxes. Different sizes. Different sizes. Colors. Colors. Put the boxes in the boxes. Take them out of the boxes. Boxes within boxes. And then when you're done, you got a Grammy. <laughs> Have you gotten your Grammy yet? <laughs> it's in a box somewhere. I'm, I'm still waiting for mine. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. So, okay. So you did that. 
then you got into Emerge, right? Mm -hmm. And that was when you emerged. Uh, Shatter Spell was next. Well, so then there was a few uh, singles and stuff in between, oh, and then was... there was Tides of Twilight. Tides of Twilight. Yeah, which was. I'd say that one was me just fine tuning the sound even more. There was a few songs from that album that I just love that really mm -hmm. that were like, oh, these are keep you know keepers. I can I can yeah. play these for years knowing that there's really solid foundation in them. Yeah. Um, and then the next one was Shatterstone, and in that one, I feel like every song on that album just really expresses itself really holds a mood the whole thing holds a mood mm -hmm. i just got better at storytelling as like a cohesive feel right as compared to like oh these ideas yeah, yeah, yeah. if you look at the whole story that i shared about my career first it's just a bunch of random stuff mm -hmm. and then it's reacting to everyone and then over time it's getting closer and closer into that expression and then building a story around it mm -hmm. and then it's just really precise what is it? There's a there's a comedian that says uh, first you learn how to be funny, mm -hmm. and then it's learning how to be funny in the way that you want. Okay. You know, so I, I think that applies to kind of all art. It's like first you're just figuring out how to do the thing, and then what do you actually want to do with it? Mm -hmm. um, I remember uh, it. You you started using a lot of like female vocals and. Uh, um, kind of mysterious, uh, not not words, mm -hmm. um, kind of like qu choral, uh, choir sort of things. Um, and to me, that that represents a big shift in your music, is when you started to like get into those kinds of sounds. Well, uh, are you talking about Silk Drop, or are you talking about Shatter Spell? Sh Shatter Spell. Yeah. I uh, so sh Silk Drop was actually like female vocals, but before it was more like. Um, yeah. textural well so a whole other side project here was Silk Drop me and the singer Heather Christie mm -hmm. uh, this kind of trap R&B indie pop type of mm -hmm. sound that actually came between Tides of Twilight and Shatterspell oh. it was right there it was because it was like me wanting to express something that other people could latch on and just a different type mm -hmm. of music um, and writing pop music is freaking hard. It's real hard. Like, yeah. as an electronic musician, I would always down on it and be like, ugh, like, just a three-minute whatever, like, verse, chorus. You try to write a verse and chorus. Just try to write a verse that moves into a chorus smoothly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Freaking difficult. Yeah, yeah. Now, make it not boring as hell mm -hmm. for three minutes. <laughs> like, yeah, it's yeah. hard. It is, um, it is very difficult. It is you a know, really good challenge. I used to, yeah, when I was younger and more foolish, I did a lot of, like, this kind of... Like, oh yeah, pop music, It's it's got no soul and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, actually, these people are very good at what they do. And they worked really hard at these skills. And, and quite a bit of it is actually very good art. Yeah. Um, so. And there's a ton of musicians behind any pop song. It's not one person. Yeah. It's like yeah. big teams. Yeah. There is, um, there is a thing where sometimes I'll hear a song and I can almost kind of like, see the the like seed of uh -huh. that and the seed was like how do we make money where do we you know yeah what are we what are we gonna what are we gonna sell to these kids what do they like you know and that is kind of gross when i hear it uh -huh. but then there's a lot of pop songs where it's like oh this was like you know there was a real idea here and it was developed well and executed and now they're making tons of money mm -hmm. and Anyone making money in music has my blessing. I, just, you know, it's not easy to do. No. Um, so, yeah. So back to the vocal expression thing, because this thing is. Just, yeah. I love this conversation around um, around that time before Silk Drop. I read this book called The Birth of Tragedy mm. by uh, Nietzsche, mm. and it talks about. A lot about art and the artistic process and the difference between Dionysian art which is uh, wild uninhibited just like mm -hmm. I'm drinking and playing music and whatever happens happens versus uh, Apollo or Apollyon art which is more right. fine-tuned and perfectly shaped mm. but one thing in that book that he talked about was 
how chorus worked in Greek, um, in Greek artistry and Greek music, where you would have music that has no vocals in it mm. is ephemeral and it tries to discuss the things that we can't even explain, mm -hmm. right? The feelings that are so confusing and everything that is so subtle that there's hard to put words into it. So music creates a space for that. Mm -hmm. But when you put vocals in it, it brings it to earth. It's about a story. It's about humans, right? Oh, interesting. It's very like this and that very straightforward. So I started playing with that where I was usually pretty ephemeral. So I wanted to become more grounded in earth with silk drop of like, how can I share a story? Yeah. Right. And it's about, it's more about human and relationship. Mm -hmm. And then I go back into uh, shatter spell, which is, Oh, I want to make this very etheric kind of otherworldly experience, but I love how relatable the voice is. Right. But I don't want them to get lost in the story. So then I used non, non English words. Uh huh. Um, it's called, uh, uh, Ornus barbaric language. Oh, okay. Uh, totally look it up. Totally nerdy. It has to do with chaos magic from the 1990s. Oh, nice. Um, and basically using Scrabble to throw out words and make them up. Um, but that's what that album is playing with these, like, mm creating a feeling without bringing it down to story mm -hmm. right on like a very language based way yeah i was as you were saying that i i just that's such an isaac thing to do with math <laughs> <laughs> like, um one of the things i've always appreciated about you is you you take your things seriously in a totally non-serious way uh. you you have a very good like you you have a good handle on play you know, you're very playful in your art, um, your way of living, kind of the way you deal with people. Uh, and it's, it's, it's always, um, it's just a little, it's very fun, man, you know, <laughs> and, uh, it's what we like each other. Yeah. <laughs> well, I remember when we met, um, it was at some crazy underground, like hippie festival, like, Sounds uh, good, right? yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I think you were just going around like trolling people. Uh, but in like the nicest way. Yeah, I wouldn't call that trolling, but like, I mean, you know, playing little pranks. You were playing, yeah, like trolling is like I'm gonna make you feel bad. Really? Oh yeah. Oh, People okay. troll on the internet. This is terrible. Don't troll. Don't troll on this. Troll face. Don't troll on the internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't. Do that. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. Yeah. Pranking people or like uh -huh. you know, uh, but but in like not an overt way. And I think like when we met each other, we we like saw that with each other like we were both kind of playing the same game yeah yeah it's kind of like when yeah. you're sort of making a joke you're pl we can hold these like mm. these stories around us of who we are and right we, we kind of create identity based on other people and what they expect from us and then there's people like maybe you and me and others who see these things right and just like don't take it so serious so it's like poking mm -hmm. at the armor like, yeah, 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 like, yeah. Really, really, this is who you think you are. Like, I know there's someone else in there. <laughs> yeah, and they don't get it because they're so tight. Yeah, they're in that in identity, thing, yeah. right? And then you and me are just like, it's it's kind of like okay. <laughs> um, some people live their their label of uh -huh. like what they are, and some people recognize their labels and they they hate them. But I feel like we see the labels around and we we love them in a way. Like we play with them, they're, yeah, they're, they're objects. With. Yeah, yeah, they're they're to they're things to be interacted with, and uh, like sometimes it's like, oh, I'm being the stereotypical artist right now, so let me be the stereotypical artist, yeah. right? Like let me be morose and sad, and and like I'm playing on it. What is your process? What is your process, man? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, is that a is that a back to my mother? It goes back to all the <laughs> trauma I had. Excellent. And that's your process? Yeah. yeah. My process is trauma with my mother. Just, just bringing it up <laughs> bringing over, it up and, over, over. and over and over. <laughs> Re-triggering <laughs> myself. Yeah. yeah. It's a constant nightmare. You're telling everyone about it. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's art, man. That's art. Yeah. yeah. Artist, <laughs> artist pain and trauma. <laughs> that's why... That's, that's why, why we, you're here. That's why we want to make more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, 
uh, I really liked Silk Drop, though. Mm. To me, I mean, uh, they're very danceable. Um, and I think at that point, that's when I started to like crave m- music with lyrics again, songs mm-hmm, mm-hmm. with stories. Yeah, because we were both super against it for a while. Oh, my God. And then we tried it. We tried it, yeah. Yeah, yeah we did um, Vaudeville Vice. little project that went nowhere that one song is still great it's still a great song yeah we should release it i think it is up i think it's on Bandcamp. well i should just throw it on my youtube at some point and that will just like make it an extra to this sure. it was a good track good good work good vocals yeah i mean you have good lyrics you're really yeah. good at lyrics thank you yeah i i can't figure out if i'm good at lyrics or terrible because i i only get one or the other like the feedback people oh that's good that means you're doing it right yeah i think so yeah yeah if you're making everyone happy they're lying to you i think your lyrics are (laughs) abstract enough to be intriguing Mm -hmm. and not like on the nose Mm -hmm. right because that's the thing about pop music it's really hard to make anything with slight amount of depth right so you can try to make no depth but that's terrible and everyone can see that and it just it won't have a long life but when you look at musicians that you still go back to like 10 years later mm-hmm. and they're still touring and they're still like, a, like they're playing pop music, but there was, there was some abstraction, some like depth to what they said. Right. You know, I, um, that, that is a thing too, is like, um, my dream or my goal, like my fantasy, I guess, is to make a song that's what I call forever music. Mm. Um, because a lot of music is uh, kind of disposable. Totally. Um, y- you know, I've I, I touched on this in another interview with uh, Miles, the saxophonist. He was saying, yeah, but you know, this, we think of the '60s as this great time for music, but if you actually go and look at what was on the top ten for any given year, most of it was garbage. Yeah. Right. We just don't remember those things. Those things didn't get passed along. Um, and what, what I would like, uh, out of my art is to make things that last and get listened to, you know, decades from now, but it's very difficult to do. Well, I think what it comes back to is still that, like finding that unique feeling Mm -hmm. and expressing it. If it's a true enough feeling that is universal, which almost all are, then it will survive. It just might survive in a different way it might not be as big Mm -hmm. it might be like only very small group of people are finding it but they're like loving it yeah yeah right like harry perch gee i was glad to hear from you believe it or not pal i just received your letter today oh yeah man right and like there's some musicians out there that still because musician lovers will find it and they'll like keep passing it out for like generations so have you ever uh Put Harry Parch on. For, yes, for, you've put Harry Parch. But have on. you ever done it for other people? No, no. No, you should. No, I should it's not. Great. People get very upset. <laughs> yes. People get like genuinely upset. That's trolling. Because it, <laughs> <laughs> but I love the music. It's really yeah, good. It's a Clockwork Orange sort of situation. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think it's different. Um, like doing something like. If you're trying to hurt someone with something that's uh, like music, that's ugly, right? Yeah. Versus if you're sharing a thing that is uh, difficult to understand but is good, you know, that's what I'm trying to do. Is uh-huh. But also, it's interesting because it's it's um, it it speaks to the power that routine has, or like the things people are used to, right? Mm-hmm. It's like okay, you know what good music is. But do you know what good music is if it's not in 12-tet, right? 
Like if I if I take away the compass, right, and I drop you in the woods somewhere, uh-huh. do you know enough to actually find your way, like through this sonic territory? And uh, you know, most people, I I couldn't. I I had to. I knew something there was good there, because he's very highly spoken of. So I kept listening to him, and and then you develop this ear for it. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Well, I even think about that music with like music from India mm-hmm, or, mm-hmm. you know, music that might use rhythms or Persian music that sometimes uses maqams and, and different tonalities. Mm-hmm. Like it can be annoying at first. Yeah. And you have to get used to the language. Like I think of like Mexican music and things like that, right? They have a feel yeah. that can be abrasive to the American, you know, Anglo in my mm-hmm. case. Uh, history until I give it its space and then something else happens yeah um, there's there's a it's like a, a fine edge of like innovating enough where it's it's similar enough to the thing that came before where people have a bridge into it mm-hmm. uh, but it's enough to like challenge people and push them forward yeah um, and then there's the people that just the hairy parches it's like uh-huh. or square pusher or apex apex or... but he got popular man he found his his uh scene and uh-huh, uh-huh. he was big you know yeah. I, th- I still think some of that music is oh um, it's amazing forever music you know totally yeah yeah, sometimes you just hit gold. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so these days you're not doing as much music mm-hmm. and you're working on some of your side projects. I, do you want to talk about that or is it? are they secret? Sure, well, yeah. just around the music, like I, I still do music teaching. Uh, I'm an Ableton certified trainer. Mm-hmm. Um, I help with a school here called Champion Sound in Portland. I do one-on-one classes still a lot, uh, different schools, things like that. I've taught for coming up on eight, nine, maybe ten years at this point. Yeah. Um, I can still like navigate Ableton Live with my eyes closed. Like I can tell right. you where sub menus are. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm making some music. Yeah. Well, it, you said it's you were starting to happen. You were starting like looking at starting a new project. Uh, or Shatterspell uh, with that dance troupe, um, Valora, looking mm-hmm. at making more music for that. Right. Um, so it's not, it's coming around. But, you know, we just went through or are in the middle of or end of, don't know, pandemic. Yeah, the right? giant pandemic. You know? And well, for yeah. that experience, for me, uh, it was about changing identity. Mm-hmm. So I went from musician into visual arts is what I used to do. Uh, I, I had a gallery in Seattle before I ever did music. So I moved into visual arts again and I created a, a deck around masculine archetypes. Mm-hmm. It's called the Hero Rise Masculine Archetype Deck. And the interesting thing is that deck is about identity. It's about right. understanding one's identity, understanding the different roles we play in our relationships, in ourself, um, kind of the hero's journey, Carl Jung, that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, Because, yeah, I think it was just, it was kind of the zeitgeist of the moment is when everything's gone, what is left? Mm -hmm. And when my music career is gone, when everything I've defined myself as for like 10, 20 years is gone, what could I rebuild? Whereas if I was rebuilding with music, it it kind of felt like I'd done that already. So Mm -hmm. now that it's gone um, fallow, fallow, Valid, right yeah. it's it's rested for a while when i do step into it it's going to be again that moment of discovery right which i haven't had for a long time yeah um which for all you new people who are starting into music or wherever your career is like as frustrating as those moments are they are amazing because you get new insight mm-hmm. so much quicker like every day is a new thing. What the hell is a compressor? What the hell is an EQ? What is right. this? What is that? Oh, I don't know. But you're learning and moving so quickly. At some point, those spaces in between get larger, larger and larger. And it's like, I know what an EQ is. 
I know what all these things are. So my next moments of inspiration will just be like subtle things right. that I'll learn and it'll open up a little bit, but you don't have as much explosion. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, that's true. So, I mean, cr- so uh, enjoy it, right? It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard, but it's beautiful it, and you'll miss it when it's gone. It's a weird thing of like, um, you know, if you're, if you're struggling with something, you're doing art or music or anything and you're you're in this period where you feel like everything you do sucks right you're you're having it it's like i i'm trying to do this thing um mm-hmm. at some point yeah that does become like a period of time you look back fondly on like mm-hmm. like ah you know i remember when every day was was exciting and also uh the failures are are very educational mm-hmm. right it's like you you get far along and then your failures aren't as um clear you know mm-hmm. it's, it's not, not as obvious like oh i needed like obviously i need to do this thing you know then then you're like oh god i had a failure i have to unpack this and like you know think about this and philosophize and uh-huh. yeah um do you think the pandemic uh was that way for most people i'd say the majority of people i know yeah um had some exploration of the what and the why of their life Mm -hmm. right lots of people changed careers right um lots of people uh left like marriages or got married or whatever there was these these moments of like anything you haven't dealt with Mm -hmm. like do it now um well there was time well there was time and there was also pressure yeah or the lack thereof yeah right where maybe you've always been so busy now mm-hmm. you're not. You've got to deal with this internal struggle, and things change. It, for me, the pandemic was so. My identity before the pandemic was, I was um, working in a tech company. I was in China, right? I had an office I went to. I had a studio full of gear over there. I was dancing every day. You know, mm-hmm. I had all my friends were dancers. You know, I would go on Friday. I would go to like high schools and teach. You know kids dancing so the pandemic hit I came here for my birthday uh, got stuck here so I lost all my studio gear uh, I lost my office right kept my job for a while eventually that kind of went under because of couldn't be there to do my job and all this other stuff um, my knees got messed up so I couldn't dance hmm. and there was no one to dance with right so it was like oh you just need to like chill for like a year right so one by one it's like every single thing that made me me yep was taken away and then you're like okay what do i do now mm-hmm. sounds yeah. about right it was it was horrible <laughs> <laughs> you know? but it was actually um you know as long i think as long as you don't get sick or permanently injured or something it's a positive it, it, it could have been a positive experience for you. Yeah, and it's also hard to know because like if right now you're still feeling really bad or really stuck or whatever it is mm-hmm. in your process, like we don't even fully understand the dissolving process mm-hmm. until it's we've done. bloomed into something else and then we're yeah. like, oh my God, I'm so happy I went through that. So it's hard to know where you are in the cycle of it, Yeah, just that it's a very normal cycle <laughs> yeah that makes and as sense. a musician as an artist you're going through this all the time little micro i call them dark nights of the soul and you're going through these like oh what's the point of it all why am i even making music what am i trying to express and then mm-hmm. oh i have this idea and like oh i'm in this idea i'm back, I'm back. and oh yeah and you're writing it out and yeah. it's so cool and then you release something and you're holding on like Will it go anywhere? And what yeah. will happen? And then like, wait, but now, like, what is the point of life? And you restart the cycle. Yeah, yeah. It's like probably what, every three to six months for me. What's the, okay. <laughs> what's the darkest one? Is there a darkest one? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Don't want to talk Don't about it. Don't want to talk about it too dark. <laughs> it's personal too. Let's keep it PG. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, um, I've definitely been in those moments where... Um, you want to just take all of your stuff and just throw 
throw it off of your desk and smash all your gear. But you don't because it's really expensive. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like at least I can sell it. At least you can sell it. Yeah, don't sm if you're if if you're going to smash all of your music equipment, sell it. Right? Like don't don't do that one. If like, it's if it's high class, like analog gear compressors hit this guy up yeah yeah no. <laughs> yeah for it for a deal obviously yeah yeah right i mean if you're gonna smash it anyways you yeah might you might as well, well just give yeah. it to him for like 10 bucks yeah <laughs> 10 bucks uh i think i think uh i think a guitar pick is about the only thing you can get for you know sub hundreds these <laughs> I, I feel like I just bitch about about making music. It's it's really <laughs> fun though. It's like wonderful actually. Hills are alive with the sound of music. Uh, oh. But you know, it's one day you'll get over the gear lust. We get gear lust. I do have really bad gear lust. It happens. Yeah. But eventually I, you'll get the things, and then you'll realize your music's no better for it, and now you have this expensive yeah. stuff, yeah, you have this and then stuff. you'll start selling it, and then just like mm -hmm. be like, oh, I still lost money, and then yeah. and then you'll get over it, and then you'll just have a few set of things, that's mm -hmm. all you need. Well, realistically, I do have everything I need yeah. to make music. There is a thing, though, where... <laughs> there's these five things. There's these five I things really I, want, want. I must have. Yeah. Uh, there is a thing, though, where... Um, Sometimes I've heard of, uh, I think BT did this. Uh, no, BT, I think, got all of his stuff stolen. That's different. I things to get better. There was a musician that uh, got rid of his whole studio because the gear and the process he had built had become a limitation for mm -hmm. him. And he was like, okay, I have to get rid of all of these things in order to move forward. Um, yeah. There was like a pianist, a famous pianist, hmm. who took their piano and reversed it. Whoa. So that, you know, the high notes were over here and the low notes were over there. Because it's the same thing. It's right. just the pattern of the mind. Mm -hmm. And then they were able to write new melodies. Or my one friend, who's a pianist, mm -hmm. got the push, able to right. push, and that is built more like a guitar. Like you're more likely to play fourths, mm -hmm. like move by fourths. So he found himself playing brand new melodies that he would never imagine before. Right. It's all the same thing. It's like how do we break our patterns if we get stuck in them? You know, I um, I heard uh, a lot of. Um... I've heard people talk about like, oh, what's the best instrument to write music with? And I've heard people say, oh, the, the piano is like piano. The, the ultimate one, right? I still think it's piano. Is, you think so? Uh, I'm inclined to agree with you, but I've heard some very convincing arguments for a guitar. And one of them is that you can retune it, right? You can like actually change the tuning of all the strings and it forces you to think in ways you didn't before. Yeah, but the thing about a piano is you can write whole symphonies from yeah. them. The thing yeah, about yeah, a piano yeah. is it's a keyboard yeah. to control a computer. Yeah. It's just so <laughs> yeah, yeah. versatile, and it's like, you know, mm -hmm. there's so much you can do with it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think those two instruments, but then then you throw in uh, percussion. Mm -hmm. You need some percussion in there, too. Yeah. And then you've got, like, a really balanced... I've, I've started to think of um, musical instruments as kind of like stacks where um you know the string kind of guitar things are all in one category which includes like bass cello um and i feel like you can actually um branch out into those like once you know one it, it becomes yeah. easier it cascades out right like once you know a wind instrument like yeah you can play a lot of wind instruments yeah and uh i think that's kind of a cool uh trick of the mind to like because some people they get into their thing and they're like oh, i'm a guitarist or i'm a bass player I'm, I'm a pianist and they don't realize that each of these things is is actually uh like a, a doorway into an even larger world yeah they don't have to limit themselves yeah i want to close that door all right it's ember the dog and the human together like as a one, yeah. one being one being like <laughs> the head top dog bottom 
Yeah, yeah, we got we got kind of a Nubis sort of thing going on. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Sorry, my brain just went all over the place. Uh, who's a Nubis? Who's, who's a Nubis? <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, is there anything else you want to talk about, or should we just sit here awkwardly for? Five more minutes, or <laughs> should we? Should we? Just... Oh, we should do that. We should just awkwardly stare at the camera for a second. And okay. Just you know, at... do you want to do that? Sure. Let's do it. Let's just. Let's. It's too big. It's not too big. It's too big. People will literally shit their pants. Come on. Finish that. Have you actually listened to dubstep? No. This shit is par for the course. Do people listen to dubstep actually? Yes. They do? At least in car commercials. Well shit. We (laughs) should in car commercials. (laughs) We we should get right on that shit and get it finished. Yeah, get some fucking car commercials. Get that shit fucking finished.